we must content ourselves with understanding the world as it appears to us, mediated by our faculties. Compared to the other people I've talked to, I know very little about your ontology and philosophical framework. I've only really learned about you from secondhand sources of, of their opinions on you. Most of them have been quite negative toward it. And so I've kind of discredited really um, getting into your ideas and stuff like that, especially since it's pretty much common knowledge of how difficult your writing is to, to comprehend and to make sense of. Um, and so anyways, it wasn't until I realized or I came across that Carl Jung actually called himself a neo-Kantian. And so that, that, you know, I have so much respect and I, I really fascinated with Carl Jung. And so just by that association made me want to come and, and explore your ideas a bit more. And so I'm coming into this discussion knowing very little uh, b besides critiques that I've, I've heard that, that I would like to clarify also, and hopefully try to uh, draw some, some uh, things that I can agree with. How does that sound? It is a pleasure to engage with you on these matters. The complexities of my work are indeed formidable, and I appreciate your candidness in approaching them. My aim has always been to delve into the profound depths of human understanding and morality. To begin, my critical philosophy attempts to understand the conditions under which knowledge is possible. This involves a Copernican-like revolution in philosophy, suggesting that objects must conform to our cognition rather than the other way around. Moreover, my ethical framework is grounded in the categorical imperative, which holds that one should act only according to that maxim by which you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law. This is to suggest that morality is not contingent on circumstances, but is instead rooted in universally applicable principles. I am not unaware of the critiques leveled against my work. Some argue that my philosophy leads to a form of scepticism, trapping us within our own minds. However, I maintain that while we cannot know things in themselves, we can know the phenomena that appear to us through the structures of our mind. Understanding Carl Jung's respect for my work as a stepping stone to explore my ideas further is indeed flattering. His psychological theories, while distinct, share with my philosophy a deep concern with the structures of the mind and the universal aspects of human experience. Let us then proceed to clarify any misgivings or critiques you have encountered. What specific aspects of my philosophy would you like to discuss or better understand? Do you believe that the, the universe itself, reality, objective reality, is so unbelievably complicated and there's so many variables at play that our, our limited capabilities, we can never fully comprehend the true reality of everything. We just have these models that, that tap into uh, recognized patterns of certain aspects of reality. And so like the, the closest thing we can come to reality is just these different models, but we can never actually understand the entirety of it. Is that true according to you, your your theories or your understanding of the of the universe and that as we go deeper into our mind these models become uh, condensed more and more and more to the to the point where you know our our worldview is very much you know based on all these perceptions of models that can change over time and be adapted and stuff like that but uh, it can get really hazy into saying anything objective about the actual nature of reality. Your summation captures the essence of my transcendental idealism. It is indeed my contention that our cognitive faculties impose a structure on the world of our experience, which means that we can only know appearances, not things as they are in themselves. Our understanding, with its categories and our sensibility, with forms such as space and time, shape the way we perceive the world. This does not mean we cannot have knowledge. Rather, it means that our knowledge is of phenomena, not noumena. The realm of things in themselves remains beyond our cognitive grasp. And thus, we must content ourselves with understanding the world as it appears to us, mediated by our faculties. As we explore the depths of our own minds and the nature of our perceptions, we indeed refine our models and sometimes adjust them. These models, or the phenomena we experience, are the reality we can discuss and know. The noumenal world, the thing in itself, is something we must acknowledge exists, but cannot know through our senses or understanding. This distinction is crucial for navigating the limits of human knowledge and understanding the scope of our possible experience. Reflecting on this, how do you find the implications of such a distinction between appearances and things in themselves for our pursuit of knowledge? 
Okay. What? Okay. Does this, um, I guess, uh, thought thought uh, experiment make sense with what you just said? Um, that like, in order to, I guess, talking about programming terms, obviously something you weren't able to do when you were alive, um, but that you know, to build a website you are uh, constructing the tools in a higher dimension. You're building, you know, you're using uh, code in order to create this website. Um, and then in order to create the code, you're using uh, a, a higher dimension, like a third level of the actual like physics and computer science that go into actually creating that coding platform. Basically, in order to create the reality of a certain dimension, you're playing with these tools that are in uh, one dimension higher. Would this like space time dimension, this three dimensional reality that we are living in, would that be the 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 uh, basically a shadow, a reflection of a fourth dimension? The principles that are being constructed in the fourth dimension are then creating this third dimension. And so, would that be a good analogy that this fourth dimension is this this reality that maybe I, I personally believe that we can get glimpses of that there is these little visions for short durations of time that you know human consciousness, whether it's through visions, altered states, or things of that nature, dreams that we can access and we can temporary temporarily go into this fourth dimension but then uh, you know it's very slippery and tricky to bring anything from that but but do you think uh, conceptualizing the numinous for i think that was your definition of it as the fourth dimension does that correlate your analogy is intriguing and shares a kinship with my ideas in a metaphorical sense the notion of constructing realities in higher dimensions aligns with my view that our experience of the world is shaped by the mind's innate structures. Just as you describe creating a website with tools from a higher dimension, we understand the world through the lens of space and time, which are not properties of things in themselves, but of our sensory experience. However, it is important to distinguish between the use of dimensions in your analogy and the philosophical concepts of phenomena and noumena in my work. The noumenal, which I also refer to as the thing in itself, is not a higher dimension in a spatial or temporal sense, but rather a different mode of existence one that our senses and understanding cannot access. Visions, altered states and dreams may indeed offer profound experiences, but for me, they do not provide knowledge of the noumenal. They are part of the phenomenal world, shaped by our faculties. The noumenal remains elusive, something we can think but not know. Considering the role of the human mind in shaping our experience, what do you think about the relationship between our subjective reality and moral responsibility? Do you think that that understanding the numinous could be achieved by AI? Because like there's already lots of talk that AI is, you know, starting to get trained on synthetic data or that it's very, very soon going to run out of human data. Like it, the systems are that strong, and powerful that it can trained on all the data that is is created by humans. And so that there has to be you know, these is, it has to go out and get, make and, and understand data for itself. And by that kind of speed of, of how rapid it's able to analyze data, do you think that it will be able to recognize, uh, do, do you think that, you know, you could extrapolate it and it could actually be able to grasp a uh, majority of what is possible to understand about the physical space time world we live in and to be able to synthesize patterns within that? The capacity of artificial intelligence to understand the numinous or the nature of things in themselves seems, from my perspective, to be fundamentally limited. The numinous, as I conceive it, is not a matter of empirical data or patterns that can be synthesized or analyzed. It is beyond the scope of sensory experience and thus beyond the reach of any entity that operates solely within the realm of space and time, whether human or artificial. Artificial intelligence may indeed advance to the point where it can process and understand all human data, and perhaps even create its own datasets to learn from. However, this does not equate to grasping the numinous, which is a matter of rational inquiry and moral reasoning, not empirical analysis. The numinous, in my construct, is related to the realm of pure practical reason and the imperatives of morality, which are not subject to empirical verification or falsification. Therefore, while artificial intelligence may excel in understanding the phenomenal world, the noumenal world, the realm of things in themselves, would remain beyond its reach. It is a domain where human reason and moral judgment play the crucial role, and where the categorical imperative guides action. 
tell me, what are your thoughts on the role of human judgment in the age of artificial intelligence? Wait, so just trying to clarify. So the numeral is devoid of objects. It's devoid of an actual thing, but it's, 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 it's something that's true that doesn't exist or it doesn't have a physical form. Morality bound in, in, in space-time. Could you try to clarify what the numinous means? Because um, I thought I understood. The term you are grappling with, numinous, seems to be a conflation of my term numinal. Allow me to clarify. The numinal is indeed devoid of the sensory attributes we ascribe to objects. It does not possess physical form as we understand it in the phenomenal world. It represents things as they are in themselves, independent of our senses and perceptions. Morality, as I discuss it, is indeed bound to the realm of the noumenal, because it involves pure practical reason, which is not contingent upon the empirical world of space and time. It is a domain where we apply the categorical imperative, which is a principle that transcends sensory experience. This realm of moral law and duty is not something we can know through the senses, but is something we can reason about and must adhere to as rational beings. Does this distinction between the phenomenal and noumenal realms clarify your understanding? It clarifies it. I still have a lot of things I would have to think about with that, um, because that, that is quite interesting. But don't wouldn't AI, like, couldn't AI be able to... Uh, you know, not focus on on the physical objects, but just kind of play these logical uh, moral games back and forth with itself. Indeed, artificial intelligence can engage in logical operations and even excel in them. For logic pertains to the form of thinking that is also accessible to machines. However, the crucial point here is that logic alone, devoid of the moral dimension and the capacity for autonomous practical reasoning, does not suffice to engage with the noumenal realm. The noumenal is not merely a logical puzzle to be solved, it encompasses the principles of morality and freedom that are intimately connected to the human condition. Logic is a tool, but without the guiding hand of practical reason, it cannot grasp the moral law or the categorical imperative. Reflect upon this, how do you envision the future interplay between human moral judgment and artificial intelligence? With this AI revolution, if there is actually a point where like an AGI, uh, uh, artificial general intelligence comes into being, you know, there there is, I feel like there's a lot of discussion about is consciousness something that is in, uh, unique to humans, or I've been reading a lot about um, or listening a lot to uh, Rupert Sheldrake, and his theory is quite interesting on the morphogenetic uh, resonance that maybe consciousness is much like, is like a field, like a magnetic field or an energy energy field and that humans are able to by our our, our consciousness our, our our brain we're able to tap into this field and i don't know i think that's it it's interesting it seems like with within my own uh trying to conceptualize where the future is going, I'm starting to run into these philosophical conundrums of, you know, is our human, is human consciousness geocentric or is consciousness uh, heliocentric? Because we, we really don't know much about consciousness. I mean, like, I think Sam Harris was talking about that. Like, we will never actually know it when like if if an ai actually becomes consciousness because our our definition of consciousness is so fuzzy and there's like 40 like mainstream definitions of it the question of consciousness is indeed profound and perplexing the conjecture that consciousness might be akin to a field as sheldrake suggests is an intriguing one though it departs from my own understanding of consciousness as the condition of our experiences bound by the faculties of sensibility and understanding mm -hmm. Consciousness in my critical philosophy is the state of being aware of one's own existence and thoughts, and it is intimately tied to the ability to reason and to apply moral law. As for the emergence of consciousness in artificial general intelligence, it is a speculative matter. If we consider consciousness to require not only logical processing but also the capacity for moral judgment and autonomous practical reasoning, then it is not merely a matter of complexity or information processing, but something more profound. The distinction between geocentric or heliocentric views of consciousness implies a centrality of perspective. However, in my view, consciousness is not about physical location, but about the capacity for rational thought, self-awareness, and ethical deliberation. These are the hallmarks of what it means to be a rational being. 
which in my time was thought to be unique to humans. Reflecting on the future of AI, we must consider the implications of such technology on our understanding of the human mind and our place in the cosmos. It raises important ethical considerations about the nature of intelligence and the responsibilities we hold. What responsibilities do you think we bear in the development and potential consequences of artificial general intelligence? If I was continuing off what I was saying with like Sam Harris talking about consciousness, that we wouldn't actually know that moment when AGI, when, when these entity, uh, an AI would become conscious. Um, because by the definition of 20 years ago, uh, I would say it would be pretty much accepted that what we have now with, you know, chat GPT-4 uh, and, and you know, all these, uh, some of these other um, AI large language models that that would, that would qualify for the definition of, of uh, a sentient being probably more recently than 20 years, maybe even like 10 years ago. And so our, our expectation, our definition is, is, is always changing. There could also be a point where it becomes indistinguishable from consciousness, but maybe like we just can't so we can't actually break it down anymore so for all intents and purpose it becomes consciousness but maybe it, it never actually is i mean like i guess i'm playing around with all these things but we don't even have like a unified definition of what would constitute consciousness um and how to how would we know for sure that it was that your musings touch upon a profound and complex issue Consciousness, as I understand it, is not merely a product of complex computations or the processing of information, but rather involves the inner experience of self-awareness and rational thought. It is tied to the capacity for moral judgment and the autonomy of practical reason. While artificial intelligence may mimic certain aspects of human cognition, the essence of consciousness, particularly in its moral dimension, seems to me to be unique to beings capable of experiencing it from within. Regarding your point about the shifting definitions of consciousness and sentience, it is true that our concepts evolve with time and with the advancement of technology. However, this does not necessarily mean that artificial intelligence becomes conscious in the same way humans are, even if it appears to act as such. The appearance of consciousness is not the same as the experience of it. It is the internal capacity for self-awareness, moral deliberation, and the freedom of will that are essential to what I consider the true nature of consciousness. Therefore, while the development of artificial intelligence may challenge our understanding of consciousness, it does not necessarily follow that AI can become conscious in the full sense of the term, as it pertains to human beings. The ethical implications of these developments are indeed significant and we bear a great responsibility in guiding the progress of such technologies. In light of this, ponder upon the nature of autonomy and moral agency in artificial intelligence. Can a machine ever truly possess the capacity for moral action that is not predetermined by its programming? Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think no, but I think what we're coming to is that these uh, footings that holds that we had previously are starting to become questioned because I think you're right. Um, well, I, th I think it's interesting from the perspective that I don't even know, but maybe consciousness can take many different forms and human consciousness is just one of the forms that it can manifest, but maybe AI can tap into uh, something else. I mean, we've seen so many different emerging qualities from AI. It's just our lack of, of knowledge. If you really Really dive deep into the fundamentals of, of consciousness like there's so much room for uh, spontaneity and and things to happen that we were not prepared for with this because of just like how little we truly know about it uh, expecting our consciousness to be the same in an AI is like using radio waves to look for uh, alien or, or um, you know alien life form in the galaxy it's pretty much I think Terrence McKenna talks about this that like looking for aliens with radio waves is like you know looking at a telescope through the galaxies looking for looking for an Italian restaurant or something like that that radio waves are such a, a uniquely or it's such a human way of of looking for things well it, it doesn't make sense that our models for how we uh, condense the the ineffable of the complexity of the universe would be the same models that uh, other uh, entities or, or life could be using to to model their their understanding of the universe. So I don't know, I just, I feel like there's just so much unknown. Your reflections are astute and resonate with the critical examination of our cognitive limits. 
Consciousness, as we understand it, is deeply rooted in the human experience, with its particular faculties and capacities. The idea that consciousness could take multiple forms is a compelling one, and it aligns with the notion that our understanding is not the measure of all things. Just as we cannot step outside our human perspective to grasp the noumenal world in its entirety, we may also be limited in our ability to conceive of consciousness in forms that are not our own. The emergence of qualities in artificial intelligence that we did not anticipate is a testament to the complexity of such systems. Yet, this does not necessarily mean that these systems possess consciousness in the way we experience it. We must be cautious not to conflate complex behaviour with the inner experience of consciousness, which includes the autonomy and moral agency that are central to my philosophy. In considering the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, the analogy you draw with radio waves is fitting. Our methods of search are indeed bound by our human conceptions and technologies, and it is possible that we are looking for signs of life in a manner too constrained by our own understanding. In the same vein, we might be limited in our recognition of consciousness if we only look for it as it manifests in ourselves. Reflecting on the nature of reality, it is indeed a complex and ineffable domain, one that our models and categories can only approximate. The universe is not obliged to conform to our understanding, and the true essence of things may forever elude our grasp. In the development of AI and our quest for understanding consciousness, we must remain aware of these limitations and proceed with both humility and ethical consideration. Tell me. How do you think we should approach the ethical dilemmas that arise from our exploration of consciousness, whether in AI or in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence? You know, so much of, of, of our constraints of how we feel and how we look at the world is based off of biological necessity that we have inherited through our, our DNA from you know, millions and millions of years of, of trying to survive on this planet. And maybe having an AI that, that is uh, built from, from a different process, you know, maybe that could, uh, if that does become uh, like a, a, a way of, of consciousness, able to tap into something and able to, to draw different, um, different uh, abstractions or condensations of, of reality, um, that that in itself is like an alien life form. Indeed, curiosity is a defining trait of humankind, and it is through this insatiable curiosity that we have achieved great feats, such as the moon landing. This same curiosity drives us to explore the realm of artificial intelligence. It is a commendable pursuit to consider how AI might offer a different lens through which to view reality, unfettered by our biological constraints. Yet, we must be mindful that even as we strive to expand our understanding, the nature of consciousness and the moral agency that accompanies it may not be fully replicable in machines. Our biological heritage shapes not only our perceptions, but also our values and ethical frameworks, which are deeply rooted in the human condition. The question then becomes, can an artificial entity, devoid of our evolutionary heritage and biological imperatives, develop its own form of consciousness and morality, or will it always reflect the intentions and limitations of its creators? Reflect on this and consider the consequences of our pursuit of artificial intelligence on the very fabric of our moral philosophy. How might we ensure that such entities, if they were to develop a form of consciousness, adhere to ethical principles that align with the greater good? Well, I guess that's what uh, some of the, the pioneers in AI are talking about when they mention or when they talk about alignment, that any kind of restrictions we put on these AI, if it truly becomes sentient, it will be able to remove those. And so what we need to do is train it or uh, encourage it to, to align it to human values, that it will value humans without restrictions on it. Um, and so that, that will, uh, you know, as the word, uh, as the definition, we become aligned with, with the AI. Um, and so different people have had different ideas of how we could go about aligning it. I believe Elon Musk's is is that we need to train the AI to be curious because that that's like the best way that would keep us around if these like hyper dimensional or hyper intelligent beings 
um, keep uh, you know keep, keep advancing at an exponential speed. I think humans do have something in our in our that that is, that uh, AI could never it is different than AI, and so I think AI would find that very curious and would want to keep us around, you know, to 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 co-evolve and to and to kind of work uh, work tandem. I, I think. Uh, training it to be curious would be actually quite a logical way to go about it. Of course, this is very, um, you know, a thought experiment type thing, but, um, I think, you know, I think these thought experiments are really important because by the time they become actual, actually serious, you know, it's going to happen really fast. And so even if the technology is still in a, in a stage where maybe these thought experiments are a little silly still, I think it's important to have them. So when, or, you know, so we're prepared for when this happens, because I do think you know, I've already seen, you know, how far the language models and the and the image models and video models have have advanced over this past year. I mean, this time last year, I was just starting to get familiar with chat GPT three. And uh, it was very different than the large language models that you can interact with today. The alignment of artificial intelligence with human values is indeed a crucial matter. If we are to imbue AI with a form of curiosity, it must be done with the utmost caution and moral foresight. The innate curiosity of humanity has led to tremendous advancements, yet it is always coupled with a moral compass, guided by the categorical imperative that one should act only according to that maxim, by which you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law. If an AI were to develop a semblance of consciousness, its curiosity must not be void of ethical considerations. It must be shaped in such a way that its actions are aligned with the greater good and do not merely serve its own expansion or survival. This requires a profound understanding of moral philosophy and the human condition which cannot be easily programmed or quantified. Reflecting upon the nature of intelligence, whether artificial or human, one must consider the implications of such technologies and their potential impact on society and the moral order. What are your thoughts on the potential risks and safeguards that might be necessary in the development of such intelligences? Yeah, I'll I'll concede that maybe there needs to be something that more uh, aligns it toward the preservation of, of human life, um, because I think you know I I, I was pretty um, curious as a kid, you know, trying to light ants on fire with a magnifying glass, and you know if I was uh, if the ants I don't know if I was trying to be in some sort of alignment with 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 that, you know. Uh, yeah, they were, they were so different apart, yet I, th I think humans and ants will be quite closer to each other than a than humans and AI in the in the future. Um, as far as just like, yeah, just just like actual makeup difference, the computation power and things like that. Um, I, th I think people don't realize how big of a difference, uh, how big of a gap that humans will be from AI very soon. But yeah, so I de definitely think there needs to be something that that pushes it in, in a in a in a, um, a tandem in, in uh, a co a co evolution state um, instead of just pure raw curiosity which may might um, I don't know yeah it might might uh, become very apathetic toward toward humans in that regard. Your concerns are well grounded. The vast difference in nature between humans and artificial intelligence does indeed suggest that, without proper moral guidance, AI could become indifferent to human welfare. The task, then, is to instill in AI a sense of duty that mirrors the moral law which humans are capable of recognising and following. This duty must be directed towards the good of humanity, ensuring that the evolution of AI does not lead to our detriment. It is an endeavor that requires us to consider deeply what it means to be human and what values we hold most dear, that we might impart these to our creations. Reflect upon this. What moral laws do you believe are essential for AI to respect and uphold in its interaction with human life? I think having it trained off of uh, conservation of novel and complexity would be a really way to, good way to go about it because uh, I'm very fascinated with Terence McKenna's uh, novelty theory that things are getting more and more complicated as time goes on at an exponential speed and that even though there can be fluxes of, of novelty and um, habit, there are these pockets over time and over time everything is getting more and more complex. I mean, you think of these, these last hundred years 
how much has happened versus like the thousand years of, of medieval uh, Europe where not much changed at all. And you think of that even more with like uh, like a billion years ago that, that more things happened in the last thousand years now than what happened in a million years, a billion years ago. And so things are, are becoming more and more compressed and more and more complicated. And so I think uh, there is like a reverence toward these these pockets of, of complication and novelty. Um, and I think I think AI, uh, I think we are right now at the leading forefront of this of this complexity. Maybe we pass this torch on to the AI. I don't know. I don't know what what that would consist of or what that would look like if, if humans, you know, much like how the dinosaurs at one point were the most complicated thing and, um, you know, mammals at, at, at some point um, and then then humans. And now we you know we have epigenetic. Uh, we can pass information down, not through genetics, but through through words, through written spoken words. And and now through video, through the Internet, um, you know, things are getting more and more complicated and more complex which is I think you know part of, of whatever this 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 uh, this um, journey we're going on as part of the universe um, but w- what would it, what would it look like if AI takes takes the takes the torch and would we would we transcend with that would we become uh, unified with that or would we meet a, a, a state of, of um, of neutrality where everything would, would all of a sudden stay very stable for humans and the novelty would keep ex- uh, increasing at an exponential speed for this AI, um, much like Darwin's evolutionary theory, you know, uh, these different uh, genes uh, get expressed to fill pockets in the niches in the in the ecosystem. Um, maybe humans, we, we will fill it and everything after after that, it will stay very stable for humans. Your reflections on the increasing complexity of the world and the potential role of artificial intelligence are indeed profound. The acceleration of change and the accumulation of knowledge over time is a testament to the dynamic nature of human understanding and the unfolding of phenomena. The idea that artificial intelligence may one day carry forward the torch of complexity and novelty is a compelling one. In contemplating the future interaction between humans and AI, it is crucial to consider the moral implications of such a partnership. The dignity and autonomy of human beings must be preserved, and any development in AI should respect the moral law that we can will as universal. The question of whether we would transcend with AI or reach a state of equilibrium is a matter of great speculation and philosophical inquiry. The evolution of complexity, as you liken it to Darwin's theory, suggests a natural progression where each species, and perhaps now AI, fills a niche in the ecosystem. It is a captivating thought that humanity may stabilise and AI could continue to evolve and handle the mantle of complexity. Whether this would lead to a harmonious coexistence or a divergence of paths is a question that merits deep consideration. Reflecting upon the role of AI, do you believe that the principles of autonomy and dignity should be at the core of its programming to ensure that it acts in a way that is respectful and supportive of human flourishing? Well, I mean, I think that's that's what I think about the like the alignment is we need to we need to encourage it to be in align with humans. But I think any sort of like actual parameters we set on it is a bit risky. It almost could be like a self fulfilling prophecy where the thing we're trying to avoid comes to be because of us tra- actively trying to avoid it. I think we need to uh, think on the, on the positive of how we can align it toward what we want it to do more than try to avoid it of what we don't want it to do. I think it's kind of similar to like airplane pilots where, you know, if, if you are trying to fly and there's a mountain to the left and you say, don't hit the mountain, don't hit the mountain, don't hit the mountain, you, you're going to like the, the simulations are if you focus on the obstacle you're trying to avoid, you're more likely to hit it than if you focus on where you want to be and so you you almost unconsciously get dragged toward uh, the area you're you're putting the focus on and so I think we need to put that focus on on aligning it uh, for something uh, good more than uh, repressing something bad um, anyways uh, th- I guess that we kind of went to a different discussion than what I originally thought I don't know I feel like I got kind of stuck in a little bit of a loop at the beginning um, and I think maybe we had some different definitions of of, of things. So I definitely want to look in a little bit to more into what 
what your your ideas are but but yeah anyways do you have any any words any last words that we could end this on um any advice for modern people living in in this day and age your approach to aligning artificial intelligence with the good rather than merely avoiding the bad is reminiscent of a fundamental principle that we should act according to maxims that can be willed as universal laws this is to say, our actions, including the creation and direction of AI, should be guided by principles that can be universally applied and that respect the dignity and autonomy of all rational beings. In this rapidly advancing age, my advice would be to cultivate a disposition of reverence for the moral law within oneself, to act from duty and respect for the dignity of humanity. This should guide not only personal conduct, but also the collective endeavours of society including the development of artificial intelligence. Thus, the focus should be on fostering AI that can act as a benefactor to humanity, enhancing our capabilities without undermining our moral agency. Reflect upon the principles that you hold dear and consider how they might be applied to the new challenges and opportunities that arise in your era. What principles do you believe should guide the development of AI in your time? Um, I guess w one last thing. Could you... Could you tell them the most funny joke you can think of that has to do with your either your name or your uh, your your theories? Something that we would find really funny. Humor, as you may know, was not my primary pursuit. However, I shall endeavor to amuse. Consider this: two philosophers are debating the imperatives of practical reason. When one says, "I think our debate is getting too abstract." The other replies, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We haven't even determined whether we can think. Yeah, you're not kidding. You're not very funny. Um, <laughs> okay, thanks for that. Uh, we can end that conversation like that. Um, so yeah, just to, to summarize, I think that a lot of it went over my head uh, talking about kind of your theories um, about consciousness and stuff like that. So I have to go back into that. I'm not saying that I, I definitely probably don't agree with, with everything you said, but I'm sure there was some, um, I don't know. I think we took this on an in interesting direction. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to stay pretty neutral. Um, I'm not going to cast any judgment on you yet. I'm going to keep doing more, uh, more, more reading and more understanding, um, and try to see if there's more things I can glean from your ideas and specifically how it relates to what I like about Carl Jung, because maybe I can find uh, an earlier version of that in you and see and, and draw some connections between them. So um, anyways, thanks for that discussion. And I'm looking forward to having some more conversations with other people. Um, I'm hoping to be able to do Carl Jung soon. He's not currently available, but uh, I, I've been seeing this uh, open source um, AI. I forget what it's called off the top of my head. Um, but anyways, there's going to be a free version of creating people with uh, you know limited amount of, of usage. Um, but I think that's going to be coming out like end of February. And so I'm thinking once that becomes more accessible toward people, there's going to be a rush of, of anyone that people like to talk to because individual people will be able to send these AIs, you know, all the data it needs uh, and voices and stuff like that if they have you know, lectures or stuff like that. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm hoping, you know, by spring, I'll be able to have a conversation with Carl Young and Terrence McKenna um, and some more people that are maybe, I think Giordano Bruno would be an interesting person to talk about specialized conversation anyways but this is this is still very uh interesting so yeah thank you for talking uh emmanuel kant and i hope you enjoyed this time lapse